Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video we will be looking at cultural variations in attachment, which you need to know for AQA level psychology in the subtopic of attachment. I hope you enjoy this video and find it helpful. Let's get started. Cultural variations in attachment refer to the differences in attachment behaviors and styles observed among infants and their caregivers across different cultural contexts. Van Lisendorn and Kronberg, 1988. Van Lisendorn and Kronberg, 1988, aimed to investigate whether attachment styles are universal across cultures or whether cultural conditions affect attachment styles. They conducted a meta analysis and examined 1,990 strange situation classifications from 32 cross cultural studies of attachment behavior between an infant and their mother across eight different countries where the strange situation had been used to classify infants as either secure, insecure avoidant or insecure resistant. Secure attachment was the most common classification in all countries studied. The lowest percent of secure attachment was shown in China, and the highest in Great Britain. Insecure avoidant attachment was most common in Germany but rare in Israel and Japan. The variation within cultures was 1.5 times greater than the variation between cultures e.g. 18 of the studies were from the USA in one study only 46% were classified as securely attached compared to another study where 90% were classified as securely attached. The overall average findings were consistent with Ainsworth's original research, secure 65%, avoidant 21%, resistant 14%. Individualistic culture rates e.g. Britain, Sweden, Holland, Germany, USA of insecure resistant attachment were similar to Ainsworth's original study, under 14%, but collectivist culture rates e.g. China, Japan, Israel of insecure resistant attachment were not similar to Ainsworth's original study, above 25%. They concluded that secure attachment was a global pattern and not limited to just Western cultures. This could be seen to support the view that attachment was an innate biological process which aids healthy social and emotional development and survival as it was evident across the globe. The quantitative findings of this study were as followed. A strength of Vanage Zendorn and Kronenberg's meta-analysis is that it used a standardized procedure. All the infant's attachment behaviors were measured and analyzed in the same way, by using the strange situation. The strange situation follows a specific sequence of episodes designed to assess the attachment behavior of infants, involving a series of separations and reunions between the child and their caregiver, typically observed in a controlled environment. The procedure includes eight episodes, each lasting about three minutes, where the child's reactions to the caregiver's departure and return are carefully observed and recorded. This is a strength because it suggests that the infant's attachment styles can be compared across different children and contexts, making it a reliable tool for studying attachment behaviors. A limitation of Vanage Zendorn and Kronenberg's meta-analysis is that it suffers from cultural bias by applying the strange situation procedure and behavioral categories. The strange situation procedure judges infants' behavior according to behavioral categories that were developed following observations of middle-class American infants. This means that when researchers interpret non-American infant behavior, it is being judged against an American standard, values and norms e.g. an infant exploring the playroom by themselves would be classed as avoidant based on American standards but is valued as reflecting independence in Germany. This is a limitation because it suggests that attachment behaviors are being evaluated through a narrow lens that may not accurately reflect the values and norms of other cultures. By applying American standards to interpret behaviors in different cultural contexts, researchers risk overlooking the significance of those behaviors within their own cultural frameworks. This can lead to an incomplete understanding of attachment styles and potentially mislabeling infants' attachment behaviors, which undermines the universality of attachment theory. A strength of Vanage Zendorn and Kronenberg's meta-analysis is that it is supported by Bowlby's monotropic theory. Vanage Zendorn and Kronenberg's meta-analysis found that secure attachment had the highest rates across all cultures, 
This similarity across all the cultures investigated can be supported by Bowlby who proposed that attachment is an innate and biological process, as all cultures have the highest rate of attachment type being securely attached, implying that it is apparent across all cultures and countries. This is a strength because it suggests that the consistency of secure attachment across cultures highlights the biological and innate aspects of attachment as proposed by Bowlby. It indicates that regardless of cultural differences, there is a commonality in the way humans form secure attachments, reinforcing the idea that attachment is a fundamental aspect of human development. However, these findings could be explained as a result of nurture and psychological factors from the environment. For example, media influences are apparent across cultures in the form of television and books which portray ideas on what parenting should be like. As a result of this, parents and children all over the world are influenced by similar forms of media on what secure attachments should look like and therefore cultural similarities may not be due to biological processes but rather media influences. This is a limitation because it suggests that the findings may not accurately reflect the true nature of attachment across cultures, as they could be influenced by shared media representations rather than genuine biological or innate processes. This raises concerns about the validity of attachment measurements, as it implies that cultural context and environmental factors play a significant role in shaping attachment behaviors, potentially leading to an oversimplified understanding of attachment in diverse populations. A limitation of Vanage Zendorn and Cronenberg's meta-analysis is that it lacks population validity. The study only used data from eight different countries which is limited considering there are around 195 countries in the world. The study also only used 32 studies, 18 of which were American, where one study observed 94% of infants having an insecure avoidant attachment, whilst a different study observed that just 47% of infants had insecure avoidant attachment. This therefore suggests that the results and findings are not completely representative of all the countries being investigated and are distorted by American Western culture. On top of this, out of the 1,990 infants that were examined, only 36 were from China. This suggests that the sample taken from each country may not represent the country as a whole as the population would vary depending of individual differences and confounding variables e.g. age, socioeconomic status, ethnicity, family size. This is a limitation because it suggests that the findings of the meta-analysis may not accurately reflect the diverse attachment behaviors present in different cultures. By relying heavily on American studies and a limited sample size from other countries, the results could misrepresent the attachment styles of infants globally, leading to an oversimplified understanding of attachment that does not account for the rich variety of cultural influences and individual differences. There is other cross-cultural research. Tokahoshi, 1990, found that the proportion of infants classified as securely and insecurely attached in Japan was similar to other countries, but there were high rates of insecure resistant attachment, 32%, and no evidence of insecure avoidant attachment. Japanese infants also showed extreme anxiety when left alone. It was suggested that this was because mothers in Japan are rarely separated from their infants in early childhood. Grossman and Grossman, 1991, found that German infants tended to be classified as insecurely attached rather than securely attached. It was suggested that this was because Germany child-rearing practices promotes independence and interpersonal space between infants and parents. Tronic et al., 1992, studied the F tribe in Africa, who live in extended family groups and found that even though infants were looked after and breastfed by several different women they showed attachment to one primary caregiver and would sleep with their mothers at night. This suggests that attachment may be an innate biological process as Bowlby suggested. Sigi et al., 1995, found high rates of insecure resistant attachments in Israeli children reflects difference in child-rearing practices. Kyung Jin et al., 2012, found that the proportion of infants classified as securely and insecurely attached in Korea was similar to other countries, however, only one infant was found to be classified as avoidant and the rest were classified as resistant. Simonelli, 2014, 
found that the proportion of infants classified as secure and insecure in Italy was lower than other countries and the proportion of infants classified as insecure avoidant was higher than other countries. It was suggested this was because increasing numbers of mothers worked long hours and used professional childcare services, so infants were more independent and used to different environments and people taking care of them. Cross-cultural research has several strengths and limitations. A strength of cross-cultural research into attachment is that it is supported by Bowlby's monotropic theory. Fox et al., 1977, examined infants raised on Israeli kibbutzim who were mostly cared for in communal children's homes by nurses. The strange situation was used to test attachment styles to study how the infants' relationships differed between their nurses and their actual mothers. They found that similar behaviors were expressed by infants towards both the nurse and mother with the only difference being in reunion behavior towards their mothers whom they showed a greater attachment towards. This implies that a primary attachment figure may exist even in shared care environments suggesting attachment behavior was more universal as Bowlby proposed. This is a strength because it suggests that attachment behaviors can be consistent across different caregiving arrangements, reinforcing the idea that the need for a primary attachment figure is a fundamental aspect of human development. This supports Bowlby's monotropic theory, indicating that despite variations in cultural practices, the core principles of attachment remain universal, highlighting the adaptive nature of these behaviors in various environments. A strength of cross-cultural research into attachment is that the majority of the studies were carried out by indigenous researchers. Indigenous researchers are those from the same cultural background as the participants. For example, Van Lisendorn and Kronberg, 1988, included research from Grossman et al., 1981, which was a German team and Tokahoshi, 1986, was Japanese. This means that potential issues that could arise in cross-cultural research when using foreign researchers e.g. misunderstanding of language used by participants or difficulty communicating instructions to them is avoided or reduced. Foreign researchers may also have a preconceived idea or stereotype about what the country or culture is like and this can lead to bias when reviewing and forming results. This is a strength because it suggests that the insights gained from the studies are more likely to be culturally valid and relevant. By employing indigenous researchers, the risk of misinterpretation due to cultural biases or misunderstandings is minimized, leading to a more accurate representation of attachment behaviors within the specific cultural context. This enhances the overall credibility of the research findings and supports the notion that attachment behaviors can be understood within diverse cultural frameworks. However, there are still a minority of significant and noticeable studies into cross-cultural research that have been carried and conducted by foreigners. For example, Morelli and Tronic, 1991, were outsiders from America when they studied child-rearing practices and patterns of attachment in the F of Zaria. Their results may have been affected by biased and stereotypes or they may have had some communication issues when gathering the data. This is a limitation because it suggests that the findings of studies conducted by foreign researchers may not accurately reflect the attachment behaviors and child-rearing practices of the local culture. The potential for biases and misinterpretations can lead to skewed results, undermining the validity of the research. This reinforces the need for culturally sensitive approaches and the inclusion of indigenous researchers to ensure a more nuanced understanding of attachment across different cultural contexts. A limitation of cross-cultural research into attachment is that it suffers from cultural bias. Rothbaum, 2000, argued the theory behind attachment behavior was too heavily based on Western interpretations of what secure attachment looks like as an infant and in adulthood. Cross-cultural psychology includes the ideas of emic, cultural uniqueness, and etic, cross-cultural universality. Cross-cultural research tries to impose an etic, the strange situations test, which was designed in America for one particular cultural context, Western and individualist, is onto another different cultural context, Eastern and collectivist. In Britain and America, a lack of affection on reunion indicates avoidant attachment, however, in Germany such behavior would be more likely interpreted as independence rather than insecurity. Bowlby and Ainsworth suggested the continuity hypothesis where securely attached children go on to be securely attached adults through being emotionally and socially competent and stable, 
shown in infancy when infants are independent, able to regulate their emotions and willing to explore their environment, however, in Japan infants are rarely separated from their mothers and dependence is encouraged and being group-focused and inhibiting emotions is seen as a form of secure attachment. This is a limitation because it suggests that the conceptualizations of attachment behaviors may not be universally applicable across different cultures. The reliance on Western standards to assess attachment can lead to misinterpretations of behaviors that are culturally appropriate in other contexts. This underscores the need for a more nuanced understanding of attachment that respects cultural uniqueness, emic perspectives, while also considering potential universal patterns, etic perspectives. Without this, Cross-cultural research may overlook important aspects of attachment that are shaped by diverse cultural norms and values. A limitation of cross-cultural research into attachment is that the findings and conclusions could be affected by confounding and extraneous variables. Studies conducted in different countries are not usually matched for methodology when they are compared in reviews or meta-analysis. Confounding variables such as poverty, age, socioeconomic status and urban-rural makeup can cause intercultural and intracultural differences. It was found by Vanage Zendorn and Segi, 2001, found that infants from urban Tokyo showed similar attachment behavior to infants in Western studies, however, infants from rural Tokyo were found to be classified more commonly as insecure resistant and therefore, Subcultures exist within cultures and each may have their own child-rearing practices. Environmental variables may also differ between studies such as the size of the room and the availability of interesting toys there. Infants may appear to explore more in studies conducted in small rooms with attractive toys compared to large bare rooms and therefore may show less visible proximity-seeking behavior because the room is smaller but be classified as avoidant. This is a limitation because it suggests that the conclusions drawn from cross-cultural attachment research may not accurately reflect the true attachment behaviors of infants across different cultures. The influence of confounding variables, such as socioeconomic status and environmental conditions, can lead to misinterpretations of attachment styles, obscuring the understanding of how cultural contexts shape these behaviors. As a result, findings may be biased or incomplete, making it difficult to generalize attachment theories universally. A limitation of cross-cultural research into attachment is that it breaks ethical guidelines. The infant's attachment types were measured using the strange situation. During the strange situation the infants are purposefully placed in an unfamiliar setting in order for the observers to measure their levels of separation and stranger anxiety. This intentionally caused emotional and psychological harm to the infants, as the harm caused to the infants during the procedure exceeded the emotional and psychological stress an infant would be exposed to in their day-to-day -day lives. Many of the infants had not been separated from their primary caregivers, the infant alone step induced stress that the infants would not normally encounter, and therefore the infants were not protected from psychological harm. This is a limitation because it suggests that attachment theories, particularly those based on Western contexts, may not be universally applicable. It raises concerns about cultural bias, as the emotional and psychological experiences of infants can vary significantly across different cultures. This implies that researchers must be cautious in generalizing findings from one cultural group to another, as interpretations of attachment behaviors can differ widely, emphasizing the need for culturally sensitive methodologies in attachment research. Thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed this video please like and subscribe for more content like this. Bye.